Hey adventurers, welcome to Oregon. I'm about an hour and a half south of Portland, and this area is just beautiful. Just look at the scenery here. It's very green. There's a lot of water. You may be able to hear a creek uh, in the background there. Uh, actually, it's right, it's right down here. It flows, um, it flows onto the path. And you know, all this moisture is great for salamanders. In fact, I already found my first one. Here, take a look at that. We'll get a closer look at this. This is a done salamander. So here we go. Here's a close look at that Dunn's salamander. Now these salamanders are part of the genus Plethodon, uh, which means that they are lungless salamanders. They breathe through their skin. And one of the important things that we always remember to do is make sure that our hands are moist when we interact with any amphibian, but especially these guys. Um, so I always carry some water around me, and of course I can use the water in the stream as well, um, or some of the sometimes moist dirt, just to get my hands a little wet uh, to sort of protect these guys as I handle them, um, and to just to give them a little bit of moisture for sort of disturbing their home for a little bit. Now, I want to see if you can take a close look at their back legs there, and there we go. You can see that third toe is the longest one. And one thing I want you to note there is we may find a different salamander that's kind of similar. Uh, might be a little thicker and um, but will also have sort of a yellow sort of dorsal strut to it. And it might have a longer fourth toe. So these guys, Dunn salamanders, the, the third toe, that middle toe is the longest. And, um, and if we find something later, I will show you the difference. Hey, so I wanted to pause the video for a second. We actually didn't find that other salamander. It was the long-toed salamander. And the fourth toe is really supposed to be longer. Now, they look kind of like this. Uh, and you can see, like, it's pretty similar to this Dunn salamander here. Um, here's another photo. This one, uh, the pattern isn't so much a line. This one's more blotchy. You can see that they do have some variation. They may be a little different. Um, but if you look closely at that toe, that fourth toe there, you can see it's significantly longer. And that's uh, the field mark that I was hoping to show you. But anyway, let's get back to it and you can see all the other cool things we found. So very cool to see. These guys also come in some color variations. This guy is fairly yellow, um, but I've seen them in more orange colors as well. So very cool. Great first find. I'm going to give him some water, put him back, and we'll be on our way. All right. Under there. There you go. Can you make it back under your log? Let's go. Let's go. Dig underneath. All right. There you go, now you've almost disappeared and we can be on our way. Let's just, a little poke there. Oh, maybe that wasn't a great spot. There we go, that's definitely gone and hidden. All right, we got another herp for today. This one, I'm not that excited to see. Uh, you can see those are bullfrogs. And the reason, there goes one. The reason I'm not excited is because they're not supposed to be here. These are um, eastern species that have been introduced to the west. There's two there, I think. Uh, one on the log. Oh, here we go. There you go. You can see another closer look there. Um, and then I see one across the water there. So definitely a lot of bullfrogs here. Um, and uh oh there's another one on the on the shore yeah, there's so two. there's two on the shore one right yeah and there's one perched on that little leaf in the water yeah i got that one and then there's one right back there yeah so obviously you can hear that there are quite a lot in this area uh and like i said not you know i'm usually very happy to see herps but uh not not so much these guys out here uh because they shouldn't be here but um, anyway, we'll continue on and hopefully we'll have uh, something that's native to show you. All right, folks, this is exciting. We just hiked up upon a northwestern garter snake. You can see it there. Um, they're not 
tremendously distinctive snakes. Um, they do often have um, a brightly colored dorsal stripe there, um, but not too much else. Uh, I'm going to try... Unfortunately, the, the vegetation is a little thick here, and I'm pretty sure if I try to catch it, it's going to slither off pretty quickly. Um, but we'll give it an attempt anyway, uh, so we can take a closer look at it. But really exciting to see a northwestern garter snake, and this happens to also be um, a life or snake for me too. So, very cool. Let's see if we can get it in hand. All right, here's that snake. I took a step closer, and you can see it's already turned its head, ready to go. Oh yeah, it's not going to stick around very long. Um, I'm still kind of far away from it, and there's no way I'm I'm going to be able to get to it in time because I don't want to jump into all the brambles here. Um, so I'm going to step back and just kind of let it do its thing since um, it seems to have found a nice comfy spot. But very cool to see that. And uh, there's a good chance that we might find some more today, so we'll keep looking. All right, there's Tatiana up there. She just found another frog, but she also found this one over here. It's really tiny right there. Look at that. That is the Northern Pacific tree frog. And this is gonna make us sort of having completed the trifecta in over the year. So there used to be one species called the Pacific tree frog. Come back out, little body. Oh, do you have another one, Tatiana? I do, but I want so oh yeah, look at that. So yeah, like I said, there used to be one species called the Pacific tree frog, and they broke it up into three species, the Baja California, the Sierra, and these guys, the Northern Pacific tree frog. So very exciting. One's definitely more green than Ooh, the other. Yeah, they're often quite variable in color. Uh, sometimes they'll be green, sometimes they'll be brown. Um, and that's for their camouflage, because uh, obviously they're they're going to walk through sort of various habitats, sometimes in green grassy areas like this, or maybe they're going to be more on barky areas up there. And so uh, sometimes different colors will be more successful in a certain area. But these two frogs are recently metamorphosized. Uh, they'll be, they'll grow maybe like four or five times the size of this. Um, <laughs> it's crawling with one on its back. Very cool. Very cool to find. Thanks for, uh, thanks for spotting this, Tatiana. You're welcome. All right, well, we just let those frogs back, and I spotted another one that was really just sort of in the perfect little spot right there, right in the center of that leaf there. This one, oh, another it's going to hop off. This one's a little bit bigger. Not, not as big as I've, I've seen them, but um, definitely closer to a full adult. Um, and then I think Tatiana found another somewhere. Oh, jumping. yep, there it is, jumping away. Nice. This is an excellent spot for all these frogs. Those um, snakes that we saw earlier would probably love to be in this spot here hunting. So we will uh, take a close look around and see if there's, if there's any predators nearby. And hopefully we'll have a little bit more to show you. Here's an, another one. This is more like an adult at this point. Um, you can see this one's very green with a nice black face to it. Really nice to see this. Um, and just hopping in the grass, uh, right, uh, right over there was where we had the other ones. So, same still area, but this is probably, how many have we seen now? Oh, <laughs> look at that. Tatiana's pointing at, um, the frog just hopped off. She's pointing at two more that are nice, sort of laid up on the leaves there. Um, one and one just stuck. hopped, hopped, uh, right. oh. hopped over there in the bushes. I think there's another one down there. Oh, wow. Yeah, another green one. Um, this, and here's another one. Oh, Cutie. she keeps spawning them. It's probably at least... 20? Yeah, uh, probably around 20 that we've seen so far now. Um, that's pretty neat. There's gotta be snakes lurking around here somewhere. Very, very cool. Well, we have been flipping all day long, and uh, and you can see like this habitat looks great. There's a lot of water, a lot of ponds. Uh, this side, it's even even more so. Um, and really, it looks like it would be a great place for frogs and salamanders or whatnot. But I guess our luck ran out today, and uh, and we're really not really coming up with anything else. So you know, we'll put in a little bit more time, and hopefully, we'll find 
something. I'm really hoping for a long touch salamander to share with you so you can see the comparison between that and the Dunn salamander, but uh, I don't know. My, I have a feeling that that might have, that um, those frogs that we had might have been the last thing that we saw. So anyway, in case we don't see anything else, I'm Greg Schechter. This is Schechter Natural History, and I'll see you in the field.